Hey everyone, thanks for joining Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and in today's video, I'm looking at a brand new game coming to GameFound called Ancient Blood The Order of the Vampire Hunters. This is a new game from Dark Gate Games. It is a one to four player game that takes roughly an hour to two hours to play, and is a fully cooperative, narratively driven campaign game. So in the game, you are going to be playing the Order of the Vampire Hunters. You'll be a team of vampire hunters going on a journey to defeat some elder vampire. And throughout this journey, you're going to go on a, uh, in a narrative-driven campaign where you're going to be moving around from different villages to different paths and dens, and then you'll finally make your way towards the elder vampire. Now along your journey, you're going to have to make all kinds of tough decisions, whether it's in different villages or different ways you're going to go or different things you're going to have to handle that will have all kinds of different consequences on later events through the campaign. So in this video, I'm going to take you through the main features of the game, and then I'll show you a sample of each one of the different types of encounters you're going to run into, whether it's one of the different villages, one of the different paths, a den, or the elder vampire themselves. And again, this is just a sampling of what to expect as some of these are going to be randomly generated, where others are going to be specific to within the narrative that I don't have at this time. So just a sampling of these. Now I also have a link up in the top corner if you'd like to check out a playthrough video that I did with my team taking you through one of the example scenarios that I was given for this particular prototype. Now again, all the materials you see here are prototype materials and are subject to change and look a lot better in the final production copy of the game. As always, if you find these videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button subscribing to my channel. It's one of the easiest ways you can support channels like mine so we can continue to grow and be able to produce this content. If you want to be in all my videos, just consider ringing that bell, see notifications anytime I release new stuff. So let's head to the table, and we'll see what this one's all about. First, let's look at the characters that players can play as in the game, as who doesn't want to play a vampire hunter? So each character is going to have their own card that is going to have the six different stats for that character, which are Faith, Mind, Agility, Perception, Diplomacy, and Occult. Then each character is going to have two different types of attacks. They're going to have a melee attack that's going to list the range of that attack along with the number of symbols that they receive for that, which are going to be speed and damage, as well as any dice that they're going to throw when performing that attack. Each character will also have a ranged attack, which again will list their range and their stats for that. And each character will have a number of hit points, their defense, and the number of vials that they can use before taking a wound. Each character is also going to have different ability cards that they're going to rearrange at the beginning of their turn to line up the symbols. When those symbols line up, you can use those abilities by spending blood vial tokens. Now there is a cost to this, as each time you spend a blood vial token, it's going to break. And then when you get a certain number that's listed on your card, it'll can convert it over to a wound. So your character will take damage over time by using these. But some of these are very powerful abilities. And again, you have to line up these symbols, and as the game goes on, you'll gain new cards that you'll be able to add and make different combinations. So for example, with this one, I can only use these bottom two symbols now because the triangles line up. If I wanted to use the top ones, I have to rearrange them so that these squares line up to make a square symbol. So at this point, then I can use these two, but not these two. As the game goes on and players get new abilities in that, they'll be able to add new things such as weapons where they can use them and they'll get different bonuses if they line a weapon up or use a weapon that they are familiar with. And there'll be all kinds of different weapons included in the game, such as the Im Impaler and the Axe, as well as other weapons that are going to be included. And each weapon is going to have different abilities as well as its own set of stats and dice that it's going to roll. Players also have access to different items that they're going to purchase throughout the game, such as garlic and wine or food, being able to get wood, metal, and even gunpowder. And again, you're going to use these at different locations to purchase and be able to build items. As each item you will receive initially is going to be plans form where you're going to have to gain the different pieces uh, supplies to build that item at the blacksmith. So once you have those supplies and the blueprints, then you'll take those to the blacksmith and then you'll construct that weapon and then you'll actually be able to use it. Now throughout the game, players are also going to have access to combo cards such as Dive Bomb, Holds, Distract, and Double Melee among others. And each one of these can be used 
and will be described in how that the players can use them, but they will team up with other players to perform additional attacks or bonus or beneficial attacks that will grant more damage and whatnot. So the players are going to be working together to carry those out and be able to gain rewards for them and being able to do those. But each one of these is also going to have a cost, whether it's in blood vials or other things that the players must pay in order to carry these out. And there's going to be four main characters in the game. We have Giselle, Kurt, Ellie, and Otto. And each one of these characters will have their own specialties and stats. Along with, in the advanced mode, you can also choose to play. And they, when you die, instead of dying, you're going to be turned into a vampire and will work against the other players then for the rest of that, that game as long as the players survive, then they can take you to a church and revive you to turn you back into one of their teammates. Now, playing Vampire Hunters, what would it be without having vampires to slay? So there's going to be three different types of enemies that are going to be included in this game. You'll have creatures, which are going to be your lowest level enemies. Then you'll have vampires, which are going to be your mid-level enemies. And finally, elders, which I'm going to cover in a minute. And those are your super powerful boss level enemies. So with creatures and vampires, they are each going to have their card that is going to list all of their stats on it. With the vampires, their cards are going to be double-sided as they're going to have a daytime side and a nighttime side. Obviously, their nighttime side is going to be more powerful, gaining new and better abilities and giving them better stats as they are going to be more powerful during the night. Each one of these cards will outline all the details of that enemy, including how the enemy is going to activate, when it activates, and its different stats and attack types, as well as its defensive rating and the minimum requirement that you must get in speed to actually be able to hit this enemy, as some vampires are very quick where others are slow and sluggish but very defensive. The final enemy type is the Elder Vampire. These are your boss level enemies and are truly terrifying to bring down. Each one of them has their own stat card, again, listing all their different stats and attack types and that. And they also are going to have a separate set of cards that are going to outline all of their special abilities and powers. And each one of these is going to have a number of hit points. In order to eliminate the Elder Vampire, you must de defeat all four of its cards. And each Elder Vampire is gonna work a little bit differently. With our vampire here, that vampire has two attack cards and two defense cards. With the attack cards, this one is going to give her a critical damage ability. When she rolls the critical symbol on a die, she will activate this and do a wound. She also has an ability that if she does two or more damage, she's going to heal a wound. On her defensive side, she is going to add a d6 when she makes a defensive roll, and if she rolls a 1, that attacker is going to be pushed out of her space, and all of its attack, all that attack is going to fail. She also has an ability that if she defeats a hunter, she is going to add a new guardian to her area, and she also gets a bonus if she rolls 3 or more of the dodge symbols, she gets to add an additional dodge, so she's going to be even more defensive. So as the players, as the Vampire Hunters, you're going to have to choose which cards to tackle and to deplete before eliminating those cards. And again, you have to eliminate all four cards to defeat the Elder Vampire. Another important feature in this game is the clock. So each round in the game is counted as one hour, and depending upon the area that you're in, this is going to have major effects in the game. Once the clock moves past 6 o'clock into 7 o'clock, you are going to trigger the night time and you're going to have an awakening event that's going to happen. For example, in the den when you have an awakening, any spaces that have not been revealed yet, you are going to reveal and spawn vampires in there. And then from that point on, the vampires, the activation is going to work differently. In the daytime, a, act, a character or the players are going to choose an active hunter. That hunter will take its turn and then after that all the vampires will activate. In the night, it's going to be in reverse. The players will select an active hunter, but then the vampires are going to activate first, followed by the active hunter taking their turn, so all the enemies will get to go first. On top of the fact that, as covered already, you saw vampires get more powerful at night. So the players are going to have to decide how they're going to attack each area and how they're going to handle things, as they're always going to be against time. When the cycle comes back around to the daytime, again, the vampires will shift back into the nighttime or daytime stance and be a little bit weaker. So depending upon how the game is set and how the players handle things, the clock is going to be a very important part of the game and how you are going to attack the different vampires. 
So the final thing I want to do is show you a sample of this game. So first off, this is again a narratively driven campaign game where the as you move your way around different things, everything will have a narrative and will have different choices you're going to have to make that will impact the different things that you're going to work your way through as the campaign goes and hopefully making your way towards that elder vampire. So as you start off, you'll be in a different a village and then you'll move your way to different paths that will lead you to different dens that will lead you back to villages and all kinds of different things. So you're going to be constantly moving from these different spots as you work your way through. And again, as you make those decisions, they're going to impact later choices you make throughout the game. So in this part, I'm going to take you through one village or a sample of a village. Then I'll show you one possible path you might run into, a den that you may run into or a type of den, and then finally a sampling of the Elder Battle just to kind of give you an idea of how this game plays. But again, remember, as you play through this, you're going to be kind of constantly moving to, from these different areas to different other areas such as villages to different paths, the paths that might lead you to another village or would lead you to a den, which then will potentially go back to a village and then another path and so on and so forth as you continue to make your way through this maze towards the Elder Vampire. So the first area I want to cover is the village, and this is going to be composed of six different buildings. You'll have churches, emporiums, houses, black markets, inns, and blacksmiths. And each one of these buildings will have its own deck of cards, and based on the scenario, it's going to tell you how many of each building are going to be placed out. So you're going to randomly deal out a number of those types of buildings to randomly generate a village that will be different each time you play. Each one of these buildings will have different effects, such as when you go to the church, it'll have different items that you can purchase, as well as if you need to do a transfusion to bring somebody back that has either been defeated or turned into a vampire, you'll have those different options, and each one of these will have costs with it. Other buildings, such as the Emporium, will have different narrative events. So, for example, with this particular one, it says that a group of men are drinking wine at a table in the corner, and they look at you and whisper among themselves. Suddenly, one of them waves you to come over closer, and you read entry 1400 in the book. So with that, then you would go over to the entry book and go into that area. So let's go ahead and cover some of this. So within this, again, this is going to this is just a prototype. This will actually be a full book. But within this, you will have multiple choices. So first off, you can choose to go over. If you do, then you'll read entry one. If you choose to ignore him, you'll read entry two. So let's go ahead and say we go over. So you approach the table and see a roll of ancient parchment scrolls with mysterious symbols. Some of these symbols are used by vampires to communicate with other packs or with human servants. The oldest man asks you what a stranger armed like you is doing in their city. You decide to go along with them. If they are servants, it'll be easy to follow them and reach the nearby nests. You answer their question. So with this one, you would read entry four. If not, if you do not answer their question and ask him what the scrolls are, you will read entry five. So let's go ahead and say that we go along with it and read entry four. You tell him you were passing through and you, you, are, you have to reach a priest in a small church nearby to collect taxes that are due. You keep the story going. In the meantime, you try to decipher the symbols. With this one, you'll have to make an occult test. So let's go ahead and say that Giselle here is the, the hunter that is in this area. So she is going to roll her occult test, and it's going to be one die. She needs to roll a four better as listed on this entry. So let's see what she gets. And she rolls a one. Oh, no, she failed. So then the passage is going to tell you what to do with that. You'll, if you pass, you'll read entry six. If you fail, you read entry seven. With that one, you cannot decipher them. You must be very, they must be very ancient. So you decide to ask. You have a, then you'll make a persuasion test of a five plus. So then you would go and check your persuasion skill and roll on that. If you happen to roll one five or better, then you have passed. And again, you'll consult that. And this is going to continue until the er the thing is resolved, which could potentially be really good for you or really bad. Sometimes you'll take damage. Sometimes you'll gain items or scrolls or different uh, blueprints and all kinds of different things depending upon how things go and again this is going to be different for each building how they work and how you'll interact with them in the town or in the village you will not have times where 
are there will not be enemies in there more or less so the players are going to continue to take their turns taking three actions and then when they're ready they'll move on to the next step which is a path and again the path will have a narrative story with it and the path will also have its own deck of cards that you'll draw from to determine what that path is going to be once you've resolved that then you'll move into the den if you're successful of course hopefully the den is going to be your first big kind of dungeon crawling area where you're going to be making your way through trying to meet different objectives, going up against all kinds of different vampires, and then as the day or night ticks on, other things are going to happen. In the daytime, the hunters are going to go first, and then once a hunter is done, then the vampires will activate, and then it'll go to the next hunter to activate, and so on and so forth. During the night, this is going to reverse where the Players are going to select an active hunter, and then the vampires are going to go first, and then the hunt that player will have to take their turn. And so, and then the hunt the vampires are also also very or more powerful with new stats and abilities. So let's go ahead and take a look at a quick example of the den. So you'll have a number of tiles set up. So I've only set up one with this to make it really easy. And each tile is going to be broken down into a number of rooms, and each room is going to be broken down into a number of areas that are separated by these white lines. So this room here is broken into three areas, area one, two, and three, which will have numbers in the corners of them, which is going to be important when spawning, which is going to happen when you move into a new room that has a question mark on it. So let's go ahead and say that Giselle moves into this room. Right away, her turn is paused, and we'll remove this token and reveal a spawn card. So with this one, we have a Gantz that's alert. It goes in and tries to attack us. We're going to get a free attack action to try to stop it. If we're able to eliminate it, then everything is good and we can continue on. If not, then it has woken up all the rest of the vampires in its room. And that's bad news for us. So from there, then the Vasha is going to be placed in area three and he will be asleep initially, as well as the Rukin in area one. Then we have to take care of that free attack action that we have to do. So with... Uh, Giselle here, she must use a melee attack as the vampire is in her area, and her ranged attack is an area of one or two, so she has to use her melee. From there, then we're going to consult the Gantz's card to determine the minimum speed rating we must achieve in order to be able to even hit him. So his speed rating is a three. We have an initial speed of two, so we need at least one speed to come up on these dice to be successful. I do get to roll a blue die with this, and I think I'm going to go ahead and spend one of no i don't have anything there right now that's going to help me so i'm going to go ahead and do that and then he does get a yellow die so we're going to go ahead and give these a roll and see what happens i rolled a complete miss but let's go ahead and say for example that i rolled this instead so this would give me that one speed so my attack now has the minimum speed rating that it needs in order to even potentially do damage and then we'll resolve the attack so he has three dodge plus he rolled an additional dodge for four my speed was three, so we're going to cancel out three of his dodge with the speed, so he has one left. And then I did to a total of two damage to him. One of those dodges will cancel out one damage, so then one gets through, and the Gantz only has one hit point. So luckily, I was able to defeat him. He's very squishy, but he's very fast. As a reward, I get two blood vials that I'll get to add to my area, and then I can continue taking my turn. Now, luckily, it is daytime, so my the vampires that are in those rooms, those areas are sleeping. So when I make an attack action against them, they do not get any defense. But I do have to still meet the minimum speed requirements of them, and then I also have to kill them outright. Otherwise, they're going to wake up and wake up all other vampires in the room. So with that, let's go ahead and say that she is able to successfully defeat the Vasha, but by doing so, she took her two actions, so the, the Rukin's going to stand up. during Once her turn is done, so we'll go ahead and say her turn is done, then the vampires are going to go. The Rukin is going to follow a set of parameters. First off, if it is within one area of, of the active hunter, it will move into that active hunter's area and attack them. It is, so it will do that. It gets its attack, so it's going to get two blue. My hunter is going to get two yellow. We'll roll and resolve. So she rolled one dodge. It rolls one speed, which is gives it a speed of two. My hunter has a minimum speed of uh, rating of two, so it does hit her. Then it's going to resolve it, so it has that two speed. She's going to block two of it. She has two dodge remaining. And then it does two damage. She's going to block those two damage with her dodges. And so nothing gets through. From there, they're going to move into the next hunter's turn to go, as all their other, there is no other vampires to deal with at this point. 
So then the next hunter will go and choose to do something else. I do have this really nice combo attack here, hold, that the hunters can team up with. So let's go ahead and say that Otto goes in here and he wishes to use that. So in order to do this, there must be another inactive hunter in the same area to kind of hold the vampire. And then he has to spend two blood vials to do that. So he'll go ahead and convert those to broken vials. Then he's going to make the attack. So he's going to go ahead and use his hammer. He gets one, he has to roll the fragile die to see if it breaks. And then he gets a blue and a green. And then the Rukin's going to get its red die. So we'll go ahead and roll these and see what happens. The weapon does not break, so that's good news. And then let's go ahead and look at his damage that he did. So he has a minimum speed of 1 with the axe, and the Rukin's minimum speed rating is 1. So we did hit him. Then we're going to determine damage. So the Rukin rolled 1 dodge, which will be taken care of by the speed. And then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 successes plus two an additional uh, wounds from hold. So I've done seven. The Rukin stops two of those with its shields. Five get through, which is going to obliterate the Rukin. It's going to give us three blood vials, which according to the reward here, this is going to be divided up among the hunters that were active or the ones that participated in this. So these two would have to share the blood vials that were gained from this. So from there, let's take a look at the last thing, which is the Elder Battle. So with this one, again, the hunters will start in different areas, and then they'll choose the active hunter to go. With the Elder Vampire, she has her four cards that we have to deplete in order to defeat her. So let's go ahead and say with that, Ellie moves in. She's going to make an attack against the Elder Vampire with her range. She has a few abilities here, so let's go ahead and say that she spends a Blood Vial to add one additional speed. The Elder Vampire speed rating is a two, so we're already well within that with four. And then we're gonna roll one additional green die for that. Okay, we got two more speed, and then she gets to roll one yellow. She got an additional dodge. So now she has two dodges. If she would have rolled one additional, then she would have gotten an additional dodge. So my speed is four or six. She is going to stop two of those. The other speed is useless, and then I do two damage to her. She does have two shields, though, so she's going to nullify that. So unfortunately, even though that was a super fast attack, I was not able to do any damage to her. But let's go ahead and say that I rolled one additional one, one additional damage. So I would have done one damage to her, so I could choose one of the four cards to do a damage to. So let's go ahead and say that I do that one. So I'm on my way to hopefully defeating that one card. Once all the cards have been defeated, then the Elder Vampire is dead, and anybody left alive will be the, the winner of that scenario. If you're playing a campaign, then you'll get to continue, starting with the next town that you or village you go to, where you can heal up your vampire hunters. If somebody got turned or defeated, you can bring them back in the church, and hopefully heal up and get ready and get all your new equipment for your next adventure. So hopefully you help, this is helpful in decide, helping you decide whether or not this is one you want to back on GameFound. As always, if you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Or swing by GameFound's main page and drop any questions you have there as well. The creators would love to hear from you and are more than happy to answer the questions you have. Until next time, I'll see you later.